down with the coup d'etat is what these Haitian protesters are chanting. After the release of final presidential election results, massive protests all over the Caribbean nation have flared. Protesters denounce reports of fraud and call the election an electoral coup d'etat. Coming out ahead to move on to a runoff in December were two candidates, sitting President Michel Martelly's party candidate, Juvenel Moïse, and former head of the previous government's construction ministry, Jude Celestin, who was supported by Haitian musician Wyclef Jean. Despite most likely entering into the next round, Celestin recently held a press conference denouncing the results of the vote and calling it a fraud. The top eight contesting candidates are calling for an independent body to review the election results. Their main point of contention is with political party observers, also known as mandateurs. During the October 25th election, reports found that mandateurs were selling their entrance cards to enter into polling stations. A survey from the Brazilian Igarapé Institute interviewed more than 1,800 voters in 135 centers throughout the country. It revealed a vastly different voting pattern than official results. The governing party's candidate, Juvenel Moïse, only received 6.9% of the vote, a stark difference from the official results of 32.8% of the vote. Union spokesperson DJ Dominique says this fraud allowed members from mostly the ruling party, PHTK, to enter stations and vote multiple times. More than 50% of the people are false people. I vote once and again with another mandat from another party that I bought and I vote with it. And so it's a complete false number of people voting and it's a complete false number of people voting for PHTK who bought the majority of the mandat. But what has the international community had to say about these reports? The Washington-based Organization of American States, also known as OAS, has not recognized the validity of these accusations. Instead, they observed the election results announced by the Electoral Council to be, quote, consistent with what the OAS mission observed on October 25th. The United States has neither condemned or applauded the official results. Some critics speculate it's because of their now-revealed role in the last presidential election in 2010. A FOIA request revealed that in the last Last election, the Haitian private sector and the American government were working together to ensure that current presidential candidate Jude Celeste did not enter the second round of elections back in 2010. In an email between then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's chief of staff Cheryl Mills and America's ambassador to Haiti Kenneth Merton, Merton wrote, quote, Boulos and private sector have told RP, Rene Preval, that Celeste should withdraw. They would support RP staying till the 7th of February. This is big. At an event in Washington last month, Merton was asked about America's silence in this election. He said, quote, we're in a damned if you do, damned if you don't position. This is a Haitian election. We can't say the elections were great and the outcome was perfect because we don't know yet. It would be premature for us, in my view, to prejudge this election as terrific or awful until we see this process run its course. But Center for Policy and Research, research associate Jake Johnson, says America's silence is clearly benefiting the Martelly administration. There was good reason to criticize the role of the international community in 2010 for intervening and overturning the results of that election. And it's sort of interesting that the tables have largely been turned. And the silence this time is sort of taken as tacit approval of whatever's happened in the election, which obviously has benefited the government. Benefiting not just the Haitian government, but the American government as well. Dominique says America's economic interest is to continue the spread of unregulated free trade zones under the Martelly administration. They want the continuity. In fact, so the whole international community say very good, very well, very good elections, their goals and their projects, which is the free trade zone, agricultural zone, mines and tourism. 
this ain't clear. America has been largely silent to reports of fraud as well as intimidation tactics by the Haitian National Police. The Real News spoke with Dr. Tony Voltaire, who is a physician at a communal hospital in the northern department of Haiti. He says he's directly experienced intimidation from the deputy who represents Martelly's party. They have attempted to take over resources from the hospital, which runs as a nonprofit. On a tas de choses comme ça. Dernièrement, là, il a été décidé d'aller dans le centre de santé que nous avons un petit bout de, de Boy Bertrand. Il a intimidé tout le monde avec ZAM. Et puis, il a même lagué gaz lacrymogène. C'est un gaz qui est vraiment létal, bon, du moins qui est dangereux. Donc, c'est toute situation ça, okay, que nous vivons dans le moment. Ça. La population n'a pas de manifester. Ou après Port-au-Prince, il y a des gens qui le danger pour manifester. Mais dans la commune, dans la petite commune, il y a une fois qu'on manifeste, il y a gaz lacrymogène. Les mêmes qui peuvent plus loin, si il y a entre 5 à 10 personnes qui campent dans une zone, même si vous n'avez aucune mauvaise intention, vous avez déjà lâché le gaz lacrymogène sur pour, pour permettre qu'ils vous dis, dispersent. This level of intimidation by the Haitian National Police has been largely supported by the United Nations peacekeeping force, MINUSTA, as well. Now the top eight candidates want changes to Haiti's police department and the Electoral Council. Otherwise, they are calling for a transitional government to oversee new general elections. But Dominique says that this election and the ensuing conflict does not represent a fight for everyday people's voices, but rather a clash between competing elite interests. They have contradictions between them. The elections first will try try to resolve those contradictions and give the one who will emerge a legitimacy. But none of them is really uh, a popular candidate or even near. We have to organize a whole uh, organization structured to to end with this system and this this imperialist domination and above all the occupation which is about against us now a runoff on december 27th is scheduled but the question remains whether haitians will come out to vote for the first round of the presidential election according to the brazilian observers report only 20 percent of registered voters voted in the capital and after the election results came out only five percent of respondents agreed with the statement that their vote counted for the real news network jessica Devereaux, washington